Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, we would like to welcome you all to our first webinar series. We are pleased to welcome you all. This afternoon, we hope you are all doing fine and are staying healthy. My name is Roel Paras, the Training and Development Officer of Dallasal University Las Marinas, and I'll be your host for today's online engagement. Before we start, we would like to present to you our engagement rules and reminders. This webinar is recorded. Use the Q&A chat to ask questions. When asking questions, please introduce yourself and the institution you represent. For the registration, if you have not yet registered, please re register using this link. The information in the online registration form will be used to give you an account in DLSUD's learning management system. This will be the platform where you can access the webinar resources give feedback and your e-certificate. You will receive an email that contains your username and password, and you only need to register once for the entire webinar series. Now to get your certificate, watch out for the access code that will be given before the end of the webinar. It will be shown both in the presentation and at the announcement. Log into dlsudace.edu20.org. Go to courses, click enroll, input the access code you can either one go to the modules and look for the webinar evaluation module or two go to the assessment and answer the survey after completing the survey you will automatically receive your e-certificate you can download download your certificate by going to your profile to formally start today's webinar let us pray as we continue our journey to new learning let us all remember that we are in the holy presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. John Baptist de la Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever.
Dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. very much. Once again, good afternoon to everyone. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Welcome to our first webinar series entitled Curriculum Design, the Care-Centered Model. As part of our academic collaboration with the Commission on Higher Education, this learning engagement is brought to us by De La Salle University Das Parinas, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research through the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee. And now to give his message, let us welcome the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research of De La Salle University Das Marinas, Dr. Marco Saez. Thank you, Ruel, and good afternoon to all of you. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. I'd like to begin with a special shout out to our delegates from ABRA. Uh, we note it has been noticed that they've been very or they, they've started being very active in our learning management system. So thank you. I hope for those uh, who have not registered yet or who are waiting in the learning management system called Schoolbook, I hope you could tell your friends to um, log in here as the seminar is happening here. I'd also like to give a shout out to the delegates coming from Arnold Janssen, special shout out to them. Um, we would like to thank you for joining us in today's webinar. It's been how many months already? It's been close to nine months since we were advised to go on alternative mode of learning and stop temporarily our on-site and residential learning. And nine is a very magical number because it means divine completion. And I guess we have completed to a certain degree at least for the phase one, because all of us, I believe, have already started our learning, this new online learning. We have already tried out different technologies to aid in our online learning. But I guess it's just the, fir the first of many phases that we have to go through. What could be even more challenging ahead would be how to sustain this online learning and how to make the necessary adjustments given the feedback and the concerns that we have been experiencing. The LSUD is not invincible to those problems and I hope that this would be a venue in which we could share our experiences and you could learn from these experiences in the same way that you could share from your experiences and we could learn from your experiences. The difference with this webinar from other webinars is its sustainability. One thing that we hope to achieve after this and the many series of webinars that will happen until April 2021 is our sustained engagement and interaction. Through the learning management system in which you will be having access in all throughout the duration of the webinar series, would be, we would be able to continue the conversation on quality and timely education. And I hope that this would just be the beginning of a very beautiful and productive relationship that we call that we all could have could 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 do and could work on in the coming school years. Please again inform your other friends that to log in here and and go here instead of waiting to, for our learning management system. Um, I understand that there are 300 delegates and 
we wish that um, the others would join us as soon as possible. Again, thank you, and we hope for a sustained and meaningful collaboration with all of you. Thank you very much, Sir Marco. We are very glad that, we, that many schools responded to our invitation, and this afternoon we are delighted to welcome our participating schools, state and city colleges and universities, and private higher education institutions. Let's have a quick roll call of our participating schools based on our registration as of yesterday, December 8, 2020. Let us welcome our participating schools. Abra State Institute of Science and Technology, Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies, Adventist University of the Philippines, Asian Institute of Science and Technology, Das Marinas, Arnold Jensen Catholic Mission Foundation, Incorporated, Palubad Elementary School and Bagong Buhay Elementary School, Batangas State University, Bulacan State University, Bulihan Integrated National High School, Kalamba Doctors College, Capi State University, Caritas Don Bosco School, Cavite State University, City College of Tagaytay, Coleo de Muntinlupa, Coleo de San Agustin Makati, DCAP Wisdom Christian School, De La Salle College of St. Benil, De La Salle Lipa, De La Salle Medical and Health Sciences Institute, and of course, De La Salle University Das Marinas, Divine Word College of Udineta, DNMC Institute of Health Sciences, Don Bosco Technical College, Mandaluyong, and Pilamar Christian University, Roja City. We'd also like to acknowledge our delegates from La Consolacion College, Bacolod, Laguna State Polytechnic University, Lalaan Central School, Silang, Cavite, Lyceum of the Philippines University, Cavite, and from Madalag National High School, Aklan. Also joining us, are our representatives, participants from Madre Guirita Martelis School Incorporated, Silang Cavite, Manila Adventist College, Marymount Academy of Paranaque, Marvelous Fate Academy of Bacoor, Mindoro College of Agriculture and Technology, Mountain Province, Province State Polytechnic College, National University, National College of Science and Technology, Occidental Mindoro State College, Rizal College of Taal Batangas, San Juan de Jos Educational Foundation Incorporated, San Sebastian College Recoletos, Cavite City, St. Jude College Das Marinas, Santa Cruz Elementary School Das Marinas City. We also have St. Anthony de Carmeli Academy Incorporated, the University of Negros Occidental Bacolod, University of Perpetual Health System Molino, the University of the Cordilleras. Bicol University, Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University, Open University System, Isabella State College, Sisters of Mary Banux Incorporated, Surigao del Sur State College, the University of Perpetual Health, Dr. Jose G. Tamayo Medical University, and our friends from the Department of Education School Division Office, uh, Region 4A. Let us give them a virtual round of applause. We would like to welcome all our delegates and thank you for joining us this afternoon. Here are our objectives for today's webinar, to create a more care-centered curriculum and to support the continuation of the learning process in the COVID-19 era. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce our resource speaker, Join me in welcoming my co-host and moderator for this afternoon, Dr. Grace Sela Armilla, the chair of our Tourism Management Department. Good afternoon, Ms. Grace. Good afternoon, Sir Well. Our resource speaker for this afternoon is an associate professor at the Communication and Journalism Department and Director for University Advancement at Telasal University Des Marinas. He is a former two-term national president of Philippine Association of Communication Educators. He is also a member of the Board of Management of the Asian Media Information Research and Communication Center. He was a recipient of the Educational Technology Innovation Award given by the DLSED Center for Innovative Learning Programs. He was also honored as a distinguished alumni for communication education by the College of the Development Communication of University of the Philippines, Los Panos. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome our resource speaker for this afternoon, the Director of the University Advancement Office of the LSED, Mr. Marco M. Polo. Hi, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon, and uh, again, a pleasant afternoon to everyone from our colleagues in uh, our K-12 schools and to our higher education institution partners and friends from DepEd and CHED. Um, when I was looking at the list of schools being uh, mentioned by Professor Roel, uh, I uh, remember visiting some of the schools when uh, I was still actually with the Commission on Higher Education. Uh, I served CHED under uh, two CHED chairmen, Brother Rolando Dizon and uh, Father Rolando De La Rosa. And we were given the opportunity to work with many of the state colleges and universities of the country. And while I was with PACE as its national president, we also had a lot of engagements with some of the schools uh, in attendance today because of our project uh, with ABS-CBN, the Pinoy Media Congress, as well as our training programs. And uh, I'm very grateful that you're joining us today, this afternoon, so that we will actually share and learn from each other. No? Uh, it's not just us at the LSUD who will be sharing what we have been doing in this time of pandemic. We will also be uh, listening to your ideas and your perspectives with respect to how uh, has it been in your respective schools uh, as we are living in the COVID-19 era. Um, as you know, uh, yesterday in the news, it was already reported that the first ever COVID-19 vaccine was administered to uh, a British citizen uh, by no less than a Filipina health worker. Uh, it provides a ray of hope for us and we look forward to uh, the rollout of this uh, vaccine and the different kinds of uh, providers who are racing against time to try to address uh, the pandemic. But uh, despite uh, this positive development, we know that right now we are still on, uh, in a way, uh, in our own homes, most of us probably, or some of us are in the offices of our respective institutions because of the different restrictions uh, imposed uh, by our government to protect the citizens from uh, getting uh, the virus. So um, for today's session, as already mentioned, our objectives would be to share and learn about uh, how can we make our uh, school curriculum more care-centered. And I'm going to be talking about uh, this from the perspective of my experience as a classroom teacher. I have been uh, with the LSUD for more than two decades, and I've had various kinds of experiences and engagements um, with uh, different challenging situations and circumstances. Um, I'd like to begin first by uh, sharing that uh, this presentation of mine was brought about because of three factors. First is, of course, you know, the virus. Uh, when news started to spread, uh, actually, uh, the first um, documented case of the, of, of the coronavirus um, was detected in Wuhan, China in, in this month. No? And the uh, news uh, were starting to spread in beginning in January that uh, there's an, an uh, unexplained uh, flu-like uh, illness that is afflicting a lot of people in Wuhan and then it started to spread and to where it is right now. The second other um, factor that uh, led me to uh, what I will be sharing to you today is uh, because of the work of our founder, St. John Baptist de La Salle. As a La Sallean educator, um, I have been given an opportunity to also try to read up about the works of our founder, who we believe was a trailblazer in terms of providing education. For those of you who are not familiar with Saint Lasalle, he is a French priest who gave up uh, a very privileged life to set up schools for the poor children in France uh, 300 years ago when he established um, the, the De La Salle schools. It is now present in over 80 countries worldwide uh, with over 100 educational institutions under its network. Here in the Philippines alone, um, under the De La Salle Philippines network, our schools educate about 100,000 students from basic education to postgraduate. And the works of St. LaSalle is very much alive today as what I will be sharing to you later uh, in this presentation. The third point I would like to share about why I'm making this presentation today is that as an educator of, in, of communication courses, one of the subjects that I teach is crisis management. And one of the things that I tell to my students is that the Chinese 
characters for crisis is comprised of two characters. The first character represents danger, but the other character represents opportunity. And with that, I try to explain to them that um, whenever we are faced with danger, let us try to see what opportunities are there to enable us to grapple with these challenges. If you recall, in March of this year, uh, our government uh, declared um, more or less a nationwide lockdown to uh, try to stem the spread of the coronavirus. So when it happened, we were still just at the start of our semester here in the university. And as our school and, and, and any other places were closed, we had to quickly transition into our learning management system. We are very fortunate that at DLSUD, uh, we have been working with our partner, uh, NEO LMS, for the past 10 years to equip our faculty members and our students and even our staff to uh, go into online distance learning. And that is why we were uh, able to transition. No? Uh, though there were disruptions, we were able to continue the teaching and learning process. And at about this time, uh, one of my organizations, uh, the Asian Media Information Center, actually, we were discussing in our uh, board, how can we um, help our fellow educators in the Asia Pacific region to try to understand how can we address uh, what is going on and how can we continue the teaching and learning process in this time of pandemic. So that is when we conceptualize also activities and webinars. Now, uh, with respect to um, how we're going to go about it, um, I said that one of the things that um, I was um, applying in, for myself as an educator is what is called compassionate flexibility. This may come as different forms for others, but um, to me, it is really um, a, a core Lasallian principle of compassion and understanding and trying to uh, be uh, flexible, to be able to be adaptive to the different circumstances of our learners. So uh, I shared this to my colleagues and, and, and mentioned to them about this um, idea that when we talk about compassionate flexibility, it includes putting ourselves in the shoes of others. No, that's empathy, being non-judgmental because knowing the different challenges and circumstances of our students. I know for a fact that when the lockdown was declared, um, we had students who were not able to go back home because they were stuck in their dorms. Uh, we had students who, foreign students studying in the university who wanted to go back to their home countries but were unable to do so uh, because of the restrictions. Um, compassion and flexibility also means distress tolerance, meaning uh, we will have to be able to bear you know, with the difficulties and challenges that we face and, and try to understand it better from a different perspective. Of course, it also includes sympathy and sensitivity to the not just to us, but also to our colleagues, because we are all facing different difficulties and challenges. As we know, um, our students and our colleagues, uh, some of them have family members who've lo who lost their jobs, who were on furlough or who were laid off. And that is why it was a it, it, it added to the tension and to the pressure at home uh, when, it, when it comes to continuing the teaching and learning process. And of course, the idea of uh, the framework that I'll be sharing with you start, uh, came out because of the concept of the care for the well-being, not just for others, but also for ourselves as well. No, because if we, we cannot, as the, as a saying go, no, we cannot give what we do not have. So as educators, we also have to take care of ourselves. And then the commitment to compassionate behavior to really make sure that uh, we will try to help our students complete uh, the learning process. Uh, at the university, uh, we uh, gave our students who were affected by the pandemic's lockdown last semester a full school year to complete their academic requirements. Uh, actually, before just coming on board, I was chatting with another colleague who was asking me how to reach out to some of the students who uh, are trying to complete their requirements that were pending last semester. And I informed this colleague that uh, please assure them that they have until uh, the middle part of next year to complete their requirements. So um, given this um, concept of compassionate flexibility, um, I uh, made put together a presentation that I first shared in April 3. That was just about two weeks when the lockdown was declared. Uh, and it was a, a, a webinar uh, that was participated in by colleagues from other countries. Uh, one of the prominent persons there would be the founder of Neo LMS, the, the one who's uh, managing our learning management system. Uh, I was fortunate to be with Graham Glass to talk about how can we learn in times of crisis. And shortly thereafter, I uh, decided to uh, write down 
uh, my presentation and share it to a wider audience. And I've had it published in uh, our institutional newsletter and also in, in the Neo LMS blog. And uh, you can access it actually further and uh, read up about it. Now, uh, with respect to what is the, what what is now our response in this COVID-19 era? Last August, the United Nations released this policy brief, and I hope uh, that you get to read it. Uh, it's free to download in the United Nations website. It talked about education during COVID-19 and beyond. But I'd like to pull a quote from that uh, uh, paper, which mentions that preventing a learning crisis from becoming a generational catastrophe requires urgent action from all. The UN is, of course, very much alarmed because of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. It is not just a health crisis, my dear friends. It has also affected our education sector. In fact, many studies have shown that it has set back the gains of our um, educational agenda for the UN Global Goals several years back because of the impact of this. What are some of these uh, challenges? The increase in the number of dropouts, the growing disparity across gender, the marginalization of women, um, of uh, persons with disabilities, and even refugees who are trying to go back to school in, in, in the refugee camps. And also the financing of education. As we know here in the Philippines is an example. There were many, as reported by Cocopea, private educational institutions that were forced to close down because of the impact of the pandemic. They were not able to, to sustain their enrollments and they had to uh, temporarily or permanently close their institutions. Now, part of this document um, it outlines specific recommendations, and I'd like to share some of them to you. And you may be familiar with these recommendations, but I hope that you take it to heart that your institution will try to do something about it. First is, of course, to suppress the transmission of the virus uh, by safely reopening our schools. Uh, as we know, we have witnessed how other countries have tried to open schools and now they're closing them again because of uh, the transmission of the virus. So I hope and I know that our schools are preparing for this eventual possibility uh, of reopening our schools. It may be sometime next year, and I hope that we are ready to deal with this. We have contingencies in place. Second recommendation is to protect education financing. Um, and coordinate the impact of it. And that is why it is important for us to work with our stakeholders, to work with our community partners, to work with our donor communities, so that we will be able to work together to continue the teaching learning process. Uh, at De La Salle University, Das Marinas, that's part of my responsibilities as a professional beggar. Um, I have a fancy title to my office, but it actually just means that I am a solicitor <laughs> and I try to look for funding for individuals and people to make an investment in the La Salian education. And we know that it is something that is uh, very challenging because also many of our business partners and, and uh, donor community uh, organizations are also facing financial difficulties, but we need to find ways. The third point is build resilient education systems for equitable and sustainable development. And this is where we need to identify how can we uh, build on our experiences during this pandemic on how to offer our uh, services to a wide spectrum of, of students from those who can afford to go fully online to those who do not have access to gadgets and will have to go to um, alternative learning modalities like uh, the use of radio, television and force modules. And of course, the hybrid system of combining the face to face and the online learning. The final recommendation and this is something that I hope we share as an exercise and as a vision is to reimagine re the education in a COVID, in a post COVID era and accelerate change in the teaching and learning process. So I do invite you to uh, read up on this uh, policy document. The second document I will be sharing with you is very fresh. It was just released the other day by uh, no less than UNESCO. It is a follow up to several UNESCO documents, but this time it's their Education for Sustainable Development Roadmap. It is uh, a roadmap that specifies education for all for uh, to try to achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. Um, one of the uh, statements in, in this paper, which I am still digesting, uh, no, it, it's, uh, it's a very uh, um, insightful document. Uh, is a quotation from the Assistant uh, Director General of UNESCO, Stefania Giannini. We are, in, and I quote, we are increasingly asking if what people learn is truly relevant to their lives. 
if what they learn helps to ensure the survival of our planet. Education for sustainable development can provide the knowledge, awareness, and action that empower people to transform themselves and transform societies. So this report actually tries to strike a balance between capacitating our young people to learn, but at the same time to try to teach them the right skill sets, abilities, and competencies for them to live uh, in a better world and for them to aspire to live in a better world for all of us. So uh, again, this is another document that I invite you to read. Um, I started teaching in the 90s and uh, I started with teaching using the chalk and the overhead projector on the left. But of course, educational technology has evolved and now there's even um, uh, technology that uh, uses virtual reality. And uh, for some of you who are here now, you're attending uh, uh, for the first time, you're using uh, our platform at the LSUD, our learning management system. Sim these are some of the innovations of the past 10 to 15 years with respect to the way changes in the classroom and in the teaching learning process is happening. And you also look at this um, um, uh, clip art to show what's happening also to our students. I remember when I was a, 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 an elementary student, I had two bags, a backpack and a roller because of the many books and textbooks that I had to lodge and carry to school. But now our students today, education is in the palm of their hands. It can be in their tablets, in their cell phones, in, and even in other wearable devices. But the reality of our education also in our country is also this. No? Um, I know that we have colleagues uh, from DepEd and from our uh, schools in, uh, in uh, basic education. And uh, we uh, have seen in the news the many sacrifices of our teachers of our support personnel, of parents, and of course our young learners who are trying to learn against all odds to try to address uh, and to try to uh, make sure that despite this pandemic, they will continue their learning process. So, so there was a time, diba, yung mga teachers, they had to go to the mountains or by the roadside. Ito yung picture dito on the lower right. They have to go to the rooftop of their school to try to get a signal to be able to attend um, some of the many webinars organized by uh, um, DepEd. Uh, the COVID tracker by uh, UNESCO also states that at the height of the pandemic, no, uh, close to 1.8 billion students were out of school. That represented 98% no, of all schools nationwide, uh, sorry, globally. And in the Philippines, it's almost 100% lockdown. So uh, of course, as the schools are reopening now in different parts of the world, we are trying to learn and adapt to the scenario. And of course, something that we dread to wait every day uh, are the COVID-19 statistics. And we are approaching close to half a million infections. And uh, the, although the active cases are quite low already, the death rate continues to increase. And uh, globally, uh, we're approaching 70 million cases and uh, 1.6 million, almost 1.6 million deaths already. Hopefully, the, the, the vaccine and the other initiatives will try to stem the rise of these numbers very soon. Our own Department of Education and CHED have already released a lot of advisories and are guiding the schools on how to conduct the, the classes now and how to prepare for the eventual reopening of face-to-face of -face learning. But that is a big if and when is it going to happen. And that's why we also need to prepare ourselves. Our uh, challenges of our educational uh, minist ministries from CHED and DepEd is that uh, we don't have uh, the sufficient resources to supply all the needs of our learners. And that's why we need to find creative ways and strategies to be able to continue the teaching and learning process. When I was uh, writing my paper for this uh, uh, topic, uh, I asked myself, how would have St. LaSalle responded to the COVID-19 pandemic. Of course, during his time, there was the Black Plague and there were other similar widespread diseases that happened. But uh, how would St. LaSalle have probably responded to it? Uh, in in prayer, prayerful discernment, um, I was asking myself. And when I, when I uh, came across his readings and teachings and his meditations, St. LaSalle wrote a lot of meditations. Um, I uh, came across one of these several actual quotations from him and this is and i'll be sharing with you some of them first is his meditation during the feast of saint joseph and when he wrote have much care and affection for the young people entrusted to you 
So definitely, yes, as educators, as local parentis, it is uh, we are our uh, the students are our like our children and they have been entrusted to us by their parents. And that is why we have to do our best to take care of them. So uh, the writings and teachings of the founder moved me to try to reflect on our experiences at De La Salle University Das Marinas and try to see how we are going to go about it. So the word that struck me was the word care. Now, uh, I know care would mean many things to all of us. So I'd like to invite all of you, uh, the, our dear participants, to try to uh, visit uh, this uh, link. Uh, please go to www.zthings.com forward slash cram all up. And let's do a short exercise. And I think our colleagues uh, here will be sharing the link as well at uh, in the chat box. So please go to uh, www.zthings.com slash cram all up. So um, allow me to uh, transition to that part of uh, to that platform so we can have this short activity. OK. So um, as you go there to Zetings, um, there is going to be a uh, question that will appear and you will be prompted. And I'd like you to key in your response. OK, so just uh, respond to this statement or complete the statement. Care for me is. Okay. So uh, we'll give you uh, three minutes to uh, respond to uh, the statement and let's see what you will come up. OK, we now have one response. Okay, keep your responses coming. So as you see, the world the word cloud is slowly being populated by your responses. We have received almost 30 responses. So we have, oh, we'll give you one more minute to uh, key in your response, dear colleagues. So you have probably used some um, other similar um, crowdsourcing platforms no? in some of your uh, synchronous classes or lectures. Uh, it, it, it may be uh, Mentimeter, WooClap, or, or the uh, Pulse function of uh, some of the uh, video conferencing platforms. Zthings is uh, quite similar to that, but it has other features that allows uh, the creators of the uh, uh, activity to interact and engage uh, with audiences of up to 500 uh, participants. And of course, uh, here uh, 
the more often a word is mentioned, the uh, more prominent it is in the word cloud. Okay, are there any more um, responses? Okay. Okay, so among uh, the more prominent words, care for me is love, compassion, protection, safekeeping, accepting, concern, loving, empathy. Yes, so thank you for uh, sharing your uh, uh, views uh, of what care for you is. Uh, I have another question actually. So let's go to the next one. Apologies, I need to move forward uh, in the interest of time. The next question is, um, what does care mean to you personally? Okay. So this is very similar to um, the earlier question. Uh, and again, it's going to form a word cloud. But I need to stop so I, uh, because um, I try, I'm trying to manage my time. Um, let me skip that and go to the last question, okay? So the last question uh, in this activity is what care activities have you done for yourself and for others? This could be with reference to you as a teacher, as an administrator, as a spouse, as a parent, as, um, uh, as a colleague. So kindly share here. What care activities have you done for yourself and for others? So this time you can um, type in a short sentence. <laughs> and let's go over your answers. Wow, I take my mom on spa dates. How I wish. <laughs> Giving myself a break. Understanding where others are coming from. Doing something good to them and to myself. Sharing by our mere presence. Hobbies, video call, checking up on them. Treat them with food. Give advice and guidance being compassionate to the needs of my students and be considerate, sending message of love, self-reflection activities, finding my me time for others, being present and praying for them, doing the extra mile, giving consideration, self-love and rendering help to others, rest, yes, very important, yes, self-care, having a massage and eating sushi for myself, <laughs> Greeting my pupils always with a smile and asking about their day, yes. Teaching and giving time, being patient. Yeah. Taking care of myself so I can take care of my loved ones too, yes, correct. Outflow of love. As a teacher, one care activity I've done was to accept their late papers, yes. That's part of being compassionate flexibility. Not being hard on myself, simple talk. Give advice to students as a mother to them who's losing hope. Yes, prayer, very much important. Utmost understanding, sharing, sharing Wi-Fi and foods. Wow, pahinge. <laughs> Care for me is love. Yes. Help. Yes. 
tons of patience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Giving time for myself and others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Giving myself a break, understanding where others are coming from. Yes. So, um, thank you so, so much for uh, sharing your responses. Uh, my apologies, I need to stop uh, sharing uh, for this particular activity. But just to let you know that Zthings is a free to use platform and it's something that can help you actually uh, further your engagement um, of your uh, learners. And I invite you to explore that platform because uh, it allows you to embed videos, files, documents, as well as other uh, interactive activities. And I hope that you will find it uh, as an additional tool in your arsenal uh, of uh, tools that uh, you are able to do and share with your colleagues and with your classes. So allow me to go back to my presentation. Uh, so Roel, uh, can you see my slide? Is it okay? Yes, sir, Marco. Okay, okay, thank you, sir. So uh, moving forward. So what did St. LaSalle write about care? Well, so as I mentioned, I started now to go back to the writings of our founder. So I found out that our founder wrote many letters and reflections. Uh, um, uh, we call it meditations about how the brothers and the teachers that the brothers were training should take care of their students, the schools, and of each other. No? So even at his during his time, Saint Tasal already um, encouraged his fellow brothers uh, to take care of uh, each other, fellow educators, and their institution. Because of this, Saint Tasal inspired others how to teach and care for young people, how to meet failure and frailty with compassion, and how to affirm, strengthen, and to heal. No? So these are very important ideas that um, we may have come across. Uh, in, in our experiences already as educators, and the more that it is important in our current uh, situation. Now, um, another document published uh, by UNESCO uh, was this document on guidance on flexible learning. So it talked about how can institutions uh, work on a flexible learning system to be able to uh, make certain adjustments. Uh, the popular term is pivot, no? So what kinds of pivot should schools be doing in terms of their infrastructure, the learning tools, resources, the teaching methods, pedagogy, strategies, the services provided to the teachers and the students, and the kind of cooperation among the different stakeholders. So again, I invite you to go over this other important resource document because it will be very helpful to you to enable you to uh, try to understand further what are the best practices in some of the countries that have been implementing uh, flexible learning strategies? So, sir, Marco, um, yes, sir. To interrupt. I think the PowerPoint is not working. Can you okay. kindly check it? Yes, please. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. I will share again. Mm -hmm. To our participants, um, you may join us in our uh, Q&A portion later after the presentation of Sir Marco. So kindly use the live chat for the questions. OK. Are my slides there, Sir, sir Well? Yes, yes. OK, OK. Yes. OK, thank you. So uh, um, going back to uh, the flexible learning, so uh, for the United Nations, they uh, are uh, encouraging educational institutions to make sure that uh, flexible learning must be learner-centered. It has to be easy, engaging, and effective. Okay. And of course, we have been uh, using a lot of uh, flexibility you know, in our teaching, you know, from going synchronous to asynchronous, to using emails, chat, uh, chat boxes and chat groups and uh, the, uh, submitting and sharing pre-recorded uh, lectures, printed modules to our students. So uh, I'm sure uh, most of us have experienced doing these different modalities no, of uh, flexible learning. Uh, we also are aware, of course, that um, even though uh, we have uh, uh, available resources to do video conferencing, we know that the Philippines, of course, has one of the slowest internet connections. In fact, my device is being prompt is prompting me. There's a slow internet connection. Your connection is slowing down. So I hope I am not disrupted or I'm not cut off. 
But uh, being aware of this, of course, there are a lot of free and open source uh, solutions that are available out there. I'll share with you a, a uh, checklist here no, from uh, UNESCO. UNESCO curated actually a lot of uh, distance learning solutions that uh, schools educators can utilize, whether it is with, uh, with or without internet connection. So uh, when you get a copy of my presentation, you can click on this link and uh, or visit the UNESCO webpage and look for their distance learning solutions page. They are regularly updating it with curated information of applications, uh, platforms, and resources on how to teach in uh, different modalities. Now, uh, with respect to uh, the challenges brought about by this pandemic, um, several uh, surveys um, conducted uh, uh, among higher education uh, institutions uh, have prompted and have asked their uh, uh, leaders to ask themselves, how can the education sector respond recover and reimagine from the pandemic. So uh, the UNESCO document that I shared earlier in the presentation uh, provides some recommendations on how to respond, recover and reimagine from the pandemic. So uh, it brings me now to uh, our um, own uh, practice of uh, implementing a care centered curriculum in the university. No. Um, at the close of our second semester, at the start of the new school year, our academics division uh, put together our care-centered model for learning in, in our current school year. This uh, um, approach and model uh, features the following. First, of course, it considers flexible learning modalities. So in our university, our students can go either fully online, uh, they can prefer to do hybrid, or we have students who are on home-based learning and uh, modules are uh, sent to them either by mail or email and uh, they continue their teaching, uh, their learning process with their uh, professors. Of course, um, our laboratory subject teachers are among the most challenged and that's why they try to also replicate laboratory activities and experiences. Of course, uh, our uh, uh, care-centered model is technology-driven it is powered by uh, our learning management system and as a Microsoft showcase school, we are able to use the uh, different tools uh, provided to us by our technology providers and partners. And of course, we try to make sure that our um, program is inclusive, that no student is left behind. And uh, we are very fortunate to have a very strong linkage with our sectoral partners. And I'll share with you one, one of the things that we did uh, to make sure that our learning is inclusive. Now, this program also uh, has the following components. First is it talks about the pacing. We understand that we cannot uh, go full blast synchronous. So uh, the uh, university uh, has given guidelines on uh, a minimum and maximum number of synchronous sessions in which uh, the students and the teachers uh, will meet um, uh, online. Uh, the pacing also has something to do with the quality and the number of assessments that are to be given and the uh, flexibility in terms of deadlines, uh, the multiple attempts that students are allowed to make uh, to enable them to master the subject matter. Uh, of course, instructor presence, uh, our uh, teachers are uh, uh, encouraged to continuously try to reach out to their students through different ways, email, through our LMS, through group chats, through SMS, to uh, find out how the students are doing and that uh, our teachers are accessible to our students so that if they have any questions or concerns, matters can be clarified. And as I mentioned with respect to assessments, we did away with some of the things that are, uh, uh, we find that may not be uh, possible or plausible in this current arrangement. Uh, some professors have replaced examinations with group projects or with output-based activities so that we will be able to also optimize uh, the limited time and resources uh, both for our students and our teachers. Again, let me, uh, this time I, I, I uh, quote again a letter of St. LaSalle to one of the brothers, Brother Daniel Darnatal, uh, Brother Robert and Darnatal, uh, take care that your school runs well. This is very important for all of us. Um, uh, it's not just our administrators 
who are after the care of the school. It is a shared responsibility. All of us play a very important role of taking care of our schools. We have to take care not just of ourselves and of each other, but of course our schools. We have to make sure that not just the physical care is taken care of, but the morale of our colleagues, the uh, motivation of everyone to continue the work and, and the mission entrusted to them despite the challenges will all redound to us taking good care of our respective institutions. Now, if and when uh, you decide to adapt your own care-centered uh, framework, I offer to you uh, some of the things that you have to take into consideration. First is that it has to strike a balance between online and offline learning. No? Although most of us now are an online modality, we will eventually go back to the classroom. We will eventually go back to our campuses. And that's why we have to put into place mechanisms to ensure that uh, the, the caring will happen uh, both in the online and offline realms. Of course, at the heart and at the center, uh, the, the core of the framework would be our students and their family members. They are the reason why we are here as educators. And we have to make sure that our framework is centered and focused on them. But apart from that also, co-equally our own colleagues, our educator, fellow educators and partners play a very important role as well because they're the enablers of the learning process. So they have to be involved also as well. And together with the school community and society at large, we have to find out how can we support each other towards a more caring ecosystem. Now in uh, putting together a, a care-centered educational curriculum, uh, I'd like to uh, share with you some of the things that you might want to take into consideration. Some of the, most of the steps here were activities that uh, our own university undertook. Some of them are things that are still in progress. We're still learning from it. We're still trying to learn further how we can uh, make things better. And I hope that's something that uh, you can take away from my presentation. Um, first is to identify and define the scope of your care-centered educational approach. How far would you like to go? Uh, who will be part of it? Uh, what kinds of offerings will you be able to uh, provide for your uh, uh, for your learners? Second is this is one of the things we really value at our university is we really ask our sectoral partners what they want and need. Um, when we were putting together their, the care-centered framework of the school, we were in constant consultation with our parents and even our alumni and of course our students. We were constantly in touch also uh, with other colleagues from other De La Salle schools, uh, sharing with each other what our experiences are, how are we doing. Uh, that's one of the benefits of having a network of schools is, is that we have this uh, capacity to try to uh, work in synergy to try to address uh, common problems and concerns. Communicate effectively with your community. When the framework was ready, it wasn't a one-time, big-time document. It's actually a living document as we speak. Uh, it's being adjusted, uh, it's, it's being modified, but what is important there is we try to disseminate it properly to our uh, community. We reach out to all our members, informing them of its features and contents. We did massive orientation of our teachers. We uh, communicated this with our students and our student leaders. We uh, retrained our faculty members to make sure that they are ready to, to provide these offerings and to provide the components and features of the framework. We also need to provide care options for a variety of learners and partners, and that is why we have we introduced the home-based learning, wherein students who have do not have stable internet connection, who don't have gadgets and devices to access our learning management system, were provided with printed modules or print-ready modules by our uh, teachers, and. Uh, Students um, who are not able to uh, physically join us uh, eventually in the future can continue on this kind of modality, especially since some of our students are abroad and there may be some travel restrictions. We will try to uh, offer our learning via distance mode through our learning management system. We also take into account the cultural and spiritual diversity of our learners. So uh, we uh, incorporated in our uh, schedule a self-care week and uh, it's mandatory for every term for uh, self-care week to, to be observed by the teacher and the students. And we also have institutional uh, self-care week. But at the same time, we try to also continue the spiritual nourishment of our students. Uh, even if we are in this kind of situation, we continue to give recollections and retreats 
to our students and we continue to try to provide activities that uh, will uh, enhance the leadership of our students by uh, conducting uh, uh, programs that will build their capabilities uh, as, uh, as learners. Provide ample and un understandable access to our to resources. So we work very closely with our library, with our other information centers in the university to try to make our resources accessible to our students and also to our teachers. So we have uh, our library conducted ma massive uh, orientation of our new students. They uh, have librarians. Um, uh, on standby uh, who are ready to assist uh, our uh, teachers and our students if they are looking for specific resources uh, for their different subjects. Another component is to create a welcoming, comforting environment of care. So this is something that uh, emanates uh, at the different levels of the organization from our brother president who has given several messages of support and address to the community wherein he will always emphasize that let us all make sure that the experience of God is lived and shared in our university and at the same time supporting each other. Um, of course, care must extend not just to our uh, students but also to our fellow colleagues, our support personnel, our uh, contractuals, our service providers and our suppliers and even our partners. Um, and then finally is to get everyone in the organization involved and excited about the care centered approach and framework. So I hope that my, my dear friends and colleagues that this uh, more or less like a checklist um, can help guide you uh, in putting together your own care centered educational curriculum. Now uh, moving forward. In uh, the framework that I developed, uh, it is comprised of eight components and elements. I'll try to uh, give a brief uh, discussion of them and then uh, hopefully at the end uh, we'll have uh, a, uh, a healthy dialogue and discussion on this. So the framework uh, contributes to the realization of a care centered education and it is comprised of the following. Uh, so the first two components would be connection and compassion. Okay. So when we talk about connection, it's our ability to keep in touch and the capacity to use our educational resources uh, optimally. No? Next is compassion. No? And this is something that was prominently mentioned uh, in our exercise on Z-Things. Going out of our way to help the physical, mental, or emotional pains no, of others. So um, knowing that we are in different learning uh, modalities and that the resources of our students and even our teachers vary, we have to be able to, to be adaptive and flexible to these uh, current scenarios. We also have to find a way to continue our connections. One of the things that um, uh, I observe is now very much part of our uh, activity is organizing webinars uh, left and right. Uh, it has enabled us to actually partner with other educational institu institutions abroad to uh, interact with them. I actually gave a lecture last Monday to a class in Indonesia and uh, next week uh, my students will be uh, working on a common project with uh, students from uh, this institution. Uh, my other colleagues have also used uh, Skype in the classroom if you're familiar with it and other platforms to connect to classes outside no, of, of the Philippines uh, or even within the country. In fact, all of us who are here now, you know, we can try to probably strike up uh, conversations and connections with our classes and work on common problems, uh, solve uh, issues and try to find creative ways no, of uh, learning. And because of that, it will bring us shared opportunities and shared experiences. And when we talk about compassion, it is really making sure that uh, we uh, are uh, mindful no, of uh, the difficulties and challenges of each other. And it is something that we have to uh, uh, incorporate in, in the things that we do. And remember the compassionate flexibility uh, that I uh, shared earlier. And here uh, in, in this uh, slide, uh, some principles when prioritizing care and compassion during times of stress. No? So there's are some of the things you can uh, try to do. Uh, simplify things, do not make things complicated. Be transparent to our students. Be conscious of our disadvantaged students. I have a student now, for example, there are six of them in the family who are studying and they're sharing just one device. So he always messages me, sir, uh, if I may not be able to go online or to submit on time, I apologize because, you know, I'm just sharing one device with my other siblings. Uh, we we uh, are very considerate of the different circumstances no, of our student uh, students. I have a student who is uh, now in uh, in uh, in a mountainous community, no, uh, 
uh, in uh, in Laguna, and uh, she's not able to uh, have very steady internet signal, and we only communicate via M SMS. So what I did is, uh, since her her phone is able to get to process data, I tried to send PDF copies of my presentations to her, and not video because it might not play uh, in her device. She is very stressed because she knows she feels that she's being left behind. But I always try to assure her that for as long as you're able to uh, update me of what's going on, you're able to submit uh, the assessments. Uh, you're if you're given multiple attempts, and we uh, we will allow you to even submit even after the deadline. That is okay. And it's okay not to be okay. And self-compassion no? includes mindfulness, self-kindness, and humanity. Take care not to let yourself be carried away by impatience in class. Uh, this is something that some of my students shared to me last uh, time as in my advisory class. And uh, they're very concerned also about uh, their ability to be patient of many things. Uh, it, it works, it, it, it is a two-way street. No? It is important for, for us to be patient. Uh, with our learners and for them to also understand that they have to be patient with us as well if we are not able to uh, provide them what they are uh, looking for. But again, what is important here is communication. The next two principles is accessibility, enabling the educational experience to be usable by people with disabilities or difficulties and are being approachable or reachable. And then adaptability, the ability to effectively react and respond in constructive ways to new novel or uncertain situations. So uh, in our uh, learning management system and in our teaching, we have to make sure that we provide assistive technologies. If you are sharing videos, make sure you can turn on your closed captioning. Uh, I had a student who had dyslexia, so I had to uh, uh, adjust the lessons, increase the typeface size. Uh, I, had student, I had a student who was colorblind, so I also had to adjust some of the learning materials that I tried to share to make sure that I'm able to adjust and help out uh, my students. If you're dealing with students with other learning abilities, I hope that you will be able to adjust you know, the tools that you're sharing uh, to them. Um, one of the things I, uh, I remember most uh, in our current situation is what Alvin Toffler said. You know, the illiterates of the 21st century are not those who cannot read or write. It will be it will be those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. And all of us, not just our students, are learning, unlearning, and relearning. And I hope that will help us no, to be more adaptive no, in our circumstances, to enable us to explore new things, to uh, um, find out what our, our other capabilities and abilities are. No? Next, um, God entrusts to you his care of the young. No? Again, uh, relate another um, uh, writings, uh, reflections from our founder. The next two concepts would be relevance, which is being appropriate to the current time, period, or circumstance, and respect, a positive feeling or action shown towards others regardless of their background or profile. So these are the next two concepts in the care model. So when we talk about uh, our uh, re uh, about being relevant uh, in the teachings, let us try to incorporate what is going on. No? Because um, let's try to find out the interest of our students. Because when we're able to do that, that is what you call the sweet spot. If you're able to find out uh, what is important to you and what interests to them, that becomes um, a, a very uh, important indicator of a very engaging uh, learning experience with your students. One of the things I try to uh, learn during this pandemic is to actually play some of the video games that my students play so I have an understanding of the gaming culture because you know many of our students, they, according to We Are Social, they play about one and a half hours a day uh, uh, on a gaming console and they're nine, they, are, they are online nine hours a day. So imagine the screen time that they spend. So I try to also educate uh, our students on digital literacy and digital citizenship. And uh, we have uh, come across a lot of common ground and interest to try to understand uh, the world around us. Your success and happiness depend on your willingness to help others solve their problems. And as I said, respect is a two-way street. When we give it, we also get it. So it is something that we need to honor with our students. There's also the golden rule from Matthew 7, um, verse 12, and also uh, I will do unto others as you would have them do unto you. To me, respect also uh, refers to the following components, being resilient, excellent, supportive, having pride, engagement, creativity, and framework. 
take even more care of the education of the young people entrusted to you than if they were the children of a king. So really um, uh, value each learner of ours. They are all children of God. They are all uh, valuable uh, uh, human beings. And it is important that we uh, extend our utmost uh, care and concern for them. So the last two concepts is to make learning both educational and entertaining. Educational is our capacity to impart knowledge, and that's why we're here as educators. And to me, that is something that uh, I try to incorporate in my own classes, is to make it entertaining and amusing. It is not just um, me uh, at the center of attention. It is I, I always try to make uh, the classroom, whether it's virtual or real, fun. And how do you do that? We incorporate games. And you can find some of these lessons and resources through the uh, open access portal of DepEd and CHED. Some educators have shared uh, freely their uh, teaching and learning resources there. And of course, there are other platforms wherein you can access some of the sample materials. And of course, uh, you may have come across some of the, the, the tools that are here. I encourage you to explore them further because there, there are a lot of uh, platforms now that provide a, a lot of support and services in recognition of the pandemic. Um, some of them are offering free use for educators. If they know that you have an edu, edu.ph email, they will give uh, preferential uh, support uh, to educators. So you can explore these different platforms. This is one of the things that I used when I was developing my uh, course syllabi. And uh, this is the pedagogy wheel. No, It looks uh, intimidating, but I, I uh, uh, I assure you, it's it's easy to navigate for as long as you understand um, the uh, hierarchy of needs, and at the same time, you're able to understand the different platforms and resources available. So uh, the pedagogy wheel was developed by Alan Carrington. It's in its, I think, fifth iteration. It contains the different competencies uh, for our learners and suggested activities, and as well as suggested. Uh, tools that you can use in order to be able to uh, execute you know, the different competencies that you would like to to uh, have uh, your learners uh, possess. So I invite you to check out also this pedagogy wheel. This is a very useful tool, especially if you're developing your learning materials at the start of your uh, of the semester. So uh, one of the things we I also incorporate is um, the uh, gamification uh, in the classroom. No? Uh, for those of you who are now uh, using our LMS and exploring it, we will have modules to help you understand how to gamify the experience. But to me, I'm quite old school. So I also uh, gamify even my exams by using word searches, anagrams, image searches in my activities. And in fact, next week we will have a Christmas party. I will also gamify it by incorporating fun activities for my classes. And of course, there are different tools. Probably you've tried Kahoot. There are other uh, tools that allow you to uh, gamify the experience, like quizzes and also um, platforms that allow you to curate content and information, like the one that I shared earlier, which is Zetings. Putting together education and entertainment, you have the term edutainment. No? And this is where the art of learning while having fun. And this, is, to me, is an important uh, component and skill set for us as educators. To, to possess no, in this time of pandemic. Uh, by doing so, we need to encourage fun, to encourage play, to encourage uh, feedback, group work, to encourage our students to explore, to encourage them to uh, 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 go to uncharted waters of, of, of learning, but at the same time embrace uh, new knowledge and experiences. So uh, in summary, this is the framework that I shared uh, this afternoon. Uh, you'll get a copy of this uh, presentation uh, by uh, uh, going over a short activity that I have uh, at the end of this presentation. Um, by the care you take of your students, show that you have a real love for them. So written by St. Lasalle during the Feast of St. Nicholas. So as I wind up uh, my presentation, um, for the care-centered curriculum, these are some of the things in which you can incorporate, no? In terms of connection, make sure that you, have, you are able to adopt flexible and inclusive learning activities, strategies, and modalities. For compassion, embed self-care and peer care activities. No? Let your students have some free time also for, for themselves, some me time, like what you do also for yourself. Accessibility, let us use assistive technologies. They are now available uh, to enable the learning to continue. 
for adaptability, promote resilience, and intuitive problem solving. For relevance, to me, this is very important. Let us include historical and contemporary issues and realities in our discussions, in our lessons. Respect, encourage data-driven collaboration across disciplines. Educational, this needs to be culture and context specific and entertaining, gamify the learning process and experience. So uh, just some of the things that we try to do at the university in this time of pandemic is that we have been doing our own share of trying to address the needs of our Kababayans. We have implemented different relief drives at the start of the pandemic to help our frontliners and at the same time now for the for those who are affected by the series of typhoons. But we try to continue our activities uh, for our students and we're very proud of the things that they have done. Our own high school department, they also have their animal strategy and they're also capacitating their students and teachers to respond to this pandemic. Uh, the university also uh, launched its client care unit, which uh, is a uh, service that our students and uh, teachers can go to if they have any assistance in understanding our care centered framework. And something that I am personally involved in is a project of my office at the start of uh, the school year we launched this care project called Connectivity Assistance for Responsive Education. So before, if you remember, my image of St. Lasalle, he was holding a book, now he's holding a laptop. We provided actually uh, free packet Wi-Fi's to all of our freshmen. No? So these packet Wi-Fi's were delivered to our students and it, it comes with free uh, Giga Study loads to enable them to start connecting to our learning management system. Of course, we extended assistance also to our upper class students through our um, development cooperative, um, very flexible payment terms uh, were offered for students to buy new gadgets or for them to upgrade uh, their gadgets. Um, the uh, connectivity assistance um, was also extended even to our own employees. No? So even they were able to avail of some support from the university. This project was made possible because of our sectoral partners. No? Shout out to our parents, our uh, colleagues in Polka, to our university student government, to our alumni association, and of course to our uh, de development cooperative and other partners and administrators. And very soon, we will be launching also the fourth phase of this campaign, and this is to reach out to, uh, to the general public to uh, raise support for our connectivity assistance project. So this is one thing that uh, we have been doing in the university to make sure that no one is left behind. So if you would like to have a copy of my presentation, I, I invite you to uh, take a picture or scan this QR code and later answer a care index questionnaire. It's a 24 item questionnaire that has a five item scale, scale and the result is a care score. So uh, there's an interpretation that you can read. It's a work in progress. I welcome comments and suggestions, but it's something that I hope uh, one of the things that you can take away is the questions here will help you reflect about your experience during this pandemic and even beyond. So uh, the interpretation will be here. You'll, you'll see it when you get a copy of your of the presentation. In closing, um, I'll close uh, with a statement and a short video. Uh, in the COVID uh, policy brief paper, uh, it states there that the crisis has been a reminder of the essential role of teachers and governments and other key partners have as an ongoing duty of care to education personnel. So they really highlighted the importance of the teachers and the schools uh, in addressing the educational crisis brought about by this pandemic. So uh, with that, I'd like to end, uh, dear friends, uh, with a short video that showcases the uh, care-centered approach of the university. And I'd like to ask my colleague uh, to play this short video for you. Thank you so much for listening. I look forward to our discussion after the short video. Salamat po. So we'll just go to that video. So while we are waiting for the video, I hope you are all enjoying our webinar this afternoon. So if you have questions, please use our live event chat. Right after the video, we'll proceed with the Q&A.
Um, sir, there's a technical difficulty. The video won't play. I apologize. Sorry. Okay, so we'll try to play the video later on. I, I think if we still have time, perhaps after the question and answer portion, if we can play the video. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Sir Marco. Thank you for giving us a very informative and engaging discussion. And uh, before we move on to the question and answer portion, I would like to acknowledge our participants from MOL Magsaysay Maritime Academy. We are joined by a dear mentor and colleague, Dr. Tess Pareja. Good afternoon, ma'am. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Hi, ma'am Tess. Ma'am Tess was the one who hired me and that's why uh -huh. I am a Lasallian educator. Thank you, ma'am Tess. <laughs> Thank you, Ma'am Tess, for joining us. All right, so uh, at this point, let us welcome back Ms. Grace to moderate the question and answer portion. Ms. Grace, please. Hello, Ms. Grace. Um, cannot hear you. I think your microphone is um, on mute, yeah. Kindly unmute your microphone, Miss Grace. All right, so I think um, while we are waiting for her, um, let's proceed with some questions. Um, we're so glad to have a lot of um, comments, greetings coming from our participants um, all around the country. So I have a question here. This is something to do about our LMS. Um, how did you deliver, uh, sorry, uh, the question is, how did you prepare for the learning management system of Dallas Salle University Das Marinas for this academic year? Okay, uh, although I am not directly involved in the uh, Center for Innovative Learning programs, but from the point of view of, of a teacher, uh, our uh, CILP, the one that is in charge of our LMS, actually conducted massive training and retraining of our teachers. And we're very fortunate that uh, they uh, uh, incorporated it in our schedule. Uh, they allowed us also to do self-paced um, uh, learning of the different modules and we had a lot of resource speakers internally and externally sharing their best practices. So actually, if you're a first time user of a learning management system, don't be afraid. We, we all went through the same experience, but what we can assure you is that when you are able to adapt an LMS, it will make uh, the teaching learning process easier. You know, one of the things I like about it, for example, is um, uh, the grade book. No, I started teaching, I was using a, a class record, no, and uh, you know, you have to compute things manually. Now in the grade book of an LMS, uh, provided you, you program it properly, it will compute things for you easily. Uh, and there are many other features there. You know, the gamified experience is one of the things my students like because they, they like to participate in, in small and short games and experiences. But at the same time, the curation of information, you have access to a library of resources prepared by fellow educators. And that's why uh, uh, the university, uh, we're very fortunate and grateful to DLSUD for really supporting the school's transition uh, into the use of this LMS and other educational technologies. All right, thank you, Sir Marco. And it's also good to know that I think um, our LMS is already in place, even uh, during the uh, COVID yes. uh, era. So is it a 10-year-old LMS? Yes, it's already yeah. 10 years old. Uh, uh, thanks to, of course, uh, the mother hen of this, Mom mm -hmm. Arlene Awayan, and then eventually her predecessors like Mom Jen Padernal and the other colleagues that followed in their footsteps. They really championed the uh, adoption no, of, uh, of a learning management system. All right. That's good to know. Thank you, sir. So we have um, another question. Uh, in caring with our pupils, during this pandemic, what can we do to make them feel that we care for them emotionally? Okay, that, that's a very good, uh, <laughs> very important question. I know. Um, one of the things that uh, you can actually do is just to ask them how they are. You know? uh, at the start of a class, uh, I, I normally ask my students how they're doing. Remember the Z things that I shared? Sometimes I have a large class. So, of course, if you ask everyone to recite, it might consume the time. So, so I also use interactive uh, applications like that to uh, ask for their feedback. 
and how they're doing and, and feeling. Uh, and as I said, it's okay not to be okay, I tell my students. If you feel that you are burned out or you need to lie low, it's all right. No, uh, part of our uh, care, care oriented framework is uh, we do not require attendance no, uh, mm -hmm. in the classes because if we have a synchronous class and our students miss it, we have a recording that we can upload no, in the LMS. No, so like um, I have students who are working students and some of them message me in, 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 in my classes and tell me, sir, I cannot attend today because I have a, a, a company event. So I tell them, okay, sure, go ahead. Uh, please do so. That's, that's your... Uh, uh, that's your work. Uh, just make sure that you uh, view the recording of, of our session. So that's one of the features that our LMS has, and particularly the use of MS Teams, is, is that you can download the recording and upload it uh, in the LMS or via Microsoft Stream. So All be right. there for your students. No? You mm -hmm. have to be, you assure them that we are there for them. Listen to them. No? Uh, get to know them uh, personally, no? uh, even if we are in distance mode. Uh, let me just share quickly. You know, one of the things I always do in my class is I ask them to submit a self-introduction at the start. No? It, it is submitted to me and I'm only the only one who will be able to read or see it and they really tell me, they, they, they tell me who they are, what their concerns are. And uh, it helps me get to know my students better. So again, it puts my, my perspective uh, it, it enables me to see it from their perspective as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, sir. Now, I would like to um, share this um, comment uh, from Ms. Zona Elisa Prado. I like that. I love the term edutainment, the art of learning while having fun. This is a very good concept, a very nice concept, sir, Marco. Thank you. Well, it didn't come from me, <laughs> but uh, it, it's a concept that we have been using in my discipline called development communication. And uh, I, I'm glad that you liked it. it. It's something that you can really infuse uh, in your teaching learning process. All right. So I have another question as we move on. Um, let me read this one. If a child, this is a situation, if a child and the parent won't like to communicate with the advisor or subject teacher, what ways can you still show care for them even we already tried our communication for them? Okay, that's, uh, that's something I can relate to as I have an advisory class. And uh, there are, we, we need to find out uh, the cause no, on why they are refusing to connect. You may need to get an intermediary maybe a fellow pay another parent or a, or a confidant classmate of the student to find out what's wrong no why are they uh, closing uh, themselves uh, or why are they not allowing themselves to uh, to be contacted by by the teacher no so uh, i try to get an intermediary no it's either a confidant a friend a fellow another parent or another teacher who um, the the student is uh, communicating with and, and try to find out. No? Uh, there may be things that we, we are not aware of that uh, may have caused s some form of uh, disconnect or anxiety on, on the part of our pupil. Thank you, sir. Uh, this one is about self-care. So self-care is also important, especially for our faculty members, for our teachers. Ms. Zona Elisa Prado is asking, with self-care week, week uh, what specific activities or events that will serve as an example for the teachers. Okay, actually, uh, at, at the LSUD, one of the things we were we apply in the self care week is really do nothing, disconnect from school, no, do not uh, do any school related work, spend time with your family, uh, do the other things that interest you, uh, do your hobbies, no. So that's one of the things we try to do. But of course. Um, we also try to be creative. Like in my class, um, I, we, we also try to, to share resources that will enable us to do self-care. Some students, they shared um, exercise tips, others shared meditation exercises, others shared self-help self uh, references and resources. So there is no uh, hard and fast rule on how to implement a self-care week. In fact, the rule is that there are no rules. No, you, you don't, you're, you're free to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> at all during the self-care week. And that's one of the things we really appreciate uh, with the university for allowing us to have it. Yes, indeed, that's very important, self-care. Now, uh, I think Miss Grace is already with us. Miss Grace, can you hear us? Can you hear me? All right, I think uh, we are having some um, connection uh, problem in terms of our connection. Uh, anyway, um, 
I think we can have another one. Mm -hmm. uh, and the question is something about monitoring. How can the administrator monitor the teachers that may not be doing well during the ODL, online distance learning? Okay. Well, um, I think uh, you, what you can do is like a 360 degree monitoring. No? Uh, first is with the use of an LMS, the LMS has its own embedded analytics. It already tracks and measures the activities that are going on in the classes. Uh, one of the benefits of using the LMS and using a, a platform like MS Teams is you don't have to take attendance because it records already the time that students log in and log out of the activity. Second is, um, of course, you, you, you can also check on your students, not check with the students. Uh, here at the university, uh, our vicar has opened up a direct line to him wherein students no, can actually send in their concerns uh, either to him or to the client care unit if they have issues or concerns uh, with, uh, with some subject teachers. Of course, uh, students are also encouraged to uh, share this with their advisors to uh, talk about their concerns if there are some difficulties in terms of reaching out or communicating mm -hmm. with the teachers. So again, um, there, are, there are many ways in which we can uh, well, monitor uh, each other no, uh, in, in this online uh, distance learning platform. And uh, the, uh, what is important is to really have an agreement also with the students on what the expectations are. No, because sometimes uh, we may be overburdening ourselves or really, uh, 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 really uh, expecting too much from our students. Remember uh, that, that the pandemic is unusual. It is uh, something that no one uh, was prepared for. And that's why we also need to, again, no, uh, be, be, be compassionately flexible uh, with each other. Okay. Now, um, I think we have a last, a last question. For the last question, how, uh, this is about learners. How can the slow learners progress in this setup during the pandemic? Can you cite some strategies and techniques? Okay. Um, when you talk about uh, slow learners, uh, probably uh, the teacher will have to really understand uh, what are the learning difficulties of our students are. No? If it is, for example, um, you have a class that, in, that is very much uh, participative no? uh, and you find out that there are slow learners there, they're not able to catch up in the participation. Try to explore other strategies to encourage students to share, to speak up. For example, uh, in our classes, we use a platform called Flipgrid. No? Flipgrid is a video sharing platform. What I do in my lessons no, is when I upload my modules, uh, I have their reflection questions. I know that some students have difficulty writing their ideas. So I give them an option. If you cannot write it, videotape your response. Because some students are more verbal, others are very adept at writing and, and vice versa. So by offering them different options of expressing themselves, I have observed that even my students who are quiet in class, Oh, uh, in the face-to-face -face class or in the online class, they are very expressive in their writing or they have a lot of ideas that they share in Flipgrid. And I am amazed at how they're able to execute and creatively share their thoughts and ideas. So I think we off uh, the, the saying that different strokes for different folks. I really don't believe that there's, there are really very slow learners. It's just that we haven't probably found the sweet spot of the students that will... Uh, light their fire, ignite their passion. No? Another thing is on group uh, activities and group work. I give my students options in the different classes that I have. One of them is they can choose their partners or there are, there's randomization in groupings. From here, you will discover also how students work in groups. Of course, you can incorporate peer evaluation so that you are also given feedback about how the students are dealing with their group mates. In, in their group activities and projects. By doing so, you will be able to identify those who are very much uh, in, in, in leadership positions, those who are uh, lagging behind, and those who, are, who seem to be disinterested in group work, and try to in introduce interventions. If you find out that they have certain concerns, it, it may be interpersonal differences. It could be uh, technological uh, differences. So by finding out, then you will be able to uh, uh, mitigate these issues and uh, introduce solutions. No? So those are some of the things that you can consider no? uh, in order to help students who you think are not able to catch up with the pace uh, of your classes. 
Okay, thank you, Sir Marco. Now, we received another question, so I think this will be sure. maybe the last one. Uh, sir, um, uh, the question is, uh, what are your views on the tension of care to accommodate difficulties both technologically and even mentally and resilience? How can the curriculum still achieve its goals and still not compromise resilience discipline? Thanks, Sir Marco. Okay, wow, that's a very uh, uh, multifaceted question. No? Um, to me, at the end of the day, no, what matters most is that uh, we are able to really extend uh, the best care possible to our students <coughs> in consideration of the circumstances. I believe that learning is not just inside the classroom, inside the Zoom meetings. Learning happens a lot also outside. So I try to strike a balance uh, on those things and uh, try to encourage my students to uh, uh, really uh, uh, value the, the education that they're learning. Uh, I'm reminded of a movie, Dangerous Minds. No? Um, in this movie, Michelle Pfeiffer asked her students no, inside the classroom. She asked them, these are students in, in a ghetto no? she, uh, or like um, urban poor community. Uh, she said, why are you here? Are you here to learn? Or are you here to pass? No, and that's a question I also ask my students sometimes. No, if 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 you're here to pass, it's easy. No? You comply with the requirements, but learning is different. No, learning is a it's a, it's a much different approach and experience. Even if you don't remember all the concepts, uh, for as long as there are things that you're able to apply to your life, to me that is important. I have a subject this semester called crisis uh, communication. We learn a lot of concepts there, but one of the things I told my students the most important lesson probably here for you is that for you to be able to learn how to survive a crisis, even at your own level or for your own families. Even if you don't apply this in your corporate job, what is important is you know how to take care of yourselves and your families. So one of the so among the things we learned in class uh, is we learn how to put together our own emergency kits, our own family emergency plan. Next year, we will learn CPR virtually, no? first aid, basic life support, and CPR virtually. Because that skill, that life skill is very essential. Who knows you can save uh, another person's life by learning CPR. So that's something we will be doing in the class that, that I teach uh, on crisis management. Thank you for that question. All right, thank you, sir. That, that was very well said. Thank you so much, sir, Marco. And also to those who joined us in our Q&A portion, maraming salamat po. At this point, I think the video is now ready. Do okay. we have it, Ms. Noor? Can we play the video before we proceed with the presentation of the certificate? Well, there's another problem. I apologize. Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Anyway, um, I uh, think they can see them on the if they visit the DLSED website, it's there. It's so uh, you can see the video on uh, what, what we wanted to show on how we're doing the care centered uh, curriculum. So we just invite our friends uh, in attendance today to visit the dlsud.edu.ph uh, webpage. All right. Thank you so much, Sir Marco. A virtual round of applause to Sir Marco for giving us a very engaging and informative presentation. Now, let us welcome back Miss Grace for the presentation of the Certificate of Appreciation. Please allow me also to share the certificate. Thank you very much, Sir Well and Sir Marco. Sir Well, can you hear me? Yes, Miss Grace, please proceed. Okay, so um, again, thank you so much, Sir Marco. It was it was a pleasure to have you here with us today. So on behalf of the organizing team, let me present the certificate. So let, let me read the citation. De La Salle University des Marinas would like to give the certificate of appreciation to you, Mr. Marco M. Paulo, for being the resource speaker in the webinar on curriculum design, the care-centered model held this ninth day of December 2020. Signed by our Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, Dr. Marco Saez, and our brother, President and Chancellor of DLSUD, Brother Gus L. Buker, FSC. 
Maraming maraming salamat po, uh, Sir Marco. Thank you po. Thank you, ma'am. It's a pleasure to, to be here in the presence of our colleagues. Salamat po. Salamat po. And um, before um, I call Sir Ruel, um, there's, I would like to share this with you, Sir Marco. This is a very nice uh, comment from one of our attendees today. Uh, the presenter is experienced and well-equipped with the topic. His students must be so lucky to have him. I'm lucky to have them as well. <laughs> so again, maraming maraming salamat po. Thank and, you. And um, Sir Ruel. Thank you, Ms. Grace. And of course, thank you, Sir Marco. Thank you for joining us this afternoon, our resource speaker. So once again, thank you very much. And would like to thank all our participating school, to all the administrators, faculty, and staff members. So once again, we would like to um, send our heartfelt appreciation to all of you. So once again, here are our participating schools. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. And of course, you would also like to acknowledge once again, MOL Magsaysay Maritime Academy for joining us. Special thanks to DepEd and to the Commission on Higher Education for making this engagement possible. On behalf of De La Salle University Das Marinas, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research and the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee would like to thank you all for joining us this afternoon. We'd also like to thank the technical support team of this engagement committee headed by uh, Engineer Rizaldi de Armas, Dean College of Engineering, Architecture and Technology, Dr. Pat Alcartado, Dean College of Education, through the guidance of our Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, Dr. Marco Saez, and of course, special thanks to the Center for Innovative Learning Program for the technical support. Maraming salamat po. Before we finally come to the end of our program, here are some important announcements and reminders. So kindly mark your calendar for our next webinar on December 16. And our um, upcoming set of webinars. So on December 16, we have our webinar on online module planning and preparation. So please do not forget to join us on December 16. Likewise, we have the other series of webinars. So we have the following dates to remember, and we would like to see all of you as we move on to the succeeding seminar webinars. All right, so now let's talk about getting your certificate. Now to get your certificate, you have to log into the lsudas.edu20.org. Go to courses, click enroll, input the access code. So this is very important. Friends, dear participants, this is our access code. It's INFV-FNRV. So this is the access code. You can either go to the modules and look for the webinar evaluation module or go to the assessments and answer the survey. After completing the survey, you will automatically receive your e-certificate. You can download your certificate by going to your profile. If you have encountered any problem, your uh, about your registration and your e-certificate please email webinars at dlsud.edu.ph and that ends our first online engagement again maraming salamat po amidst the challenges let us continuously strive let us create possibilities and let us all stay safe and healthy let us leave jesus in our hearts forever. Again, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Until next time, enjoy the rest of the day.